Year 10 and 11, welcome to your revision of setting in Jekyll and Hyde in preparation for your English Literature GCSE exam. Uh, in terms of the novella then, settings have a literal and a metaphorical meaning. So we know then, or we should know, that the novella is set in Victorian England, which is the 19th century, and more specifically it's London. We have London, Soho, the streets which are poorly lit, uh, and then we have buildings such as Hyde's House and Jekyll's Laboratory. We also get a mention of Jekyll's house as well, which we're going to come to. And setting throughout the novella reflects the underlying themes. So the duality of man is, is key, but also things like mystery and secrecy. Throughout, we should be paying particular attention to Stevenson's use of the pathetic fallacy. He emphasises darkness throughout the novella, and we should know now that metaphorically that is evil and the evil of Hyde and the character of Hyde and this idea that in this fight and the duality of man, evil is taking over. And the less respectable parts of London are associated with darkness. So Stevenson also uses the setting to represent the duality of man. So we get Soho. And Soho, symbol, uh, Soho versus the more respectable parts of London symbolises the narrative, that this idea that everybody, regardless of class, has the ability to ability to be good or evil. Fog is something huge in terms of uh, um, being a symbol. It covers the streets and it adds to this theme of mystery and secrecy. And the fog actually works against Utterson because when Utterson visits Soho, the fog cuts him off. And there's your quotation in red. Again, the theme of mystery and secrecy is as if he can't uncover the truth. Um, Stevenson himself viewed London with a, de a degree of contempt. He disliked the duality of its inhabitants. He saw Edinburgh as an influence as well. So again, this idea that you've got, you know, the dingy dismal part of London and the respectable part. So we have two classes throughout the, throughout the novella being portrayed. And again, as I've said, Stevenson is making it clear and commenting and critiquing human nature here that regardless of class, we are all inherently good and evil. And obviously Jekyll's addiction to the potion suggests that even those with a reputation and the most respectable people can be corrupted by evil. So Mr. Utterson taking the officer to Hyde's house, we get this quotation. A great chocolate coloured pall lowered over heaven, but the wind was continually charging and rooting those embattled vapours. So the darkness envelopes London and not even, uh, not just that, it um, it almost casts out heaven. Look at lowers over heaven. Paul is a dark cloud, but also a cloth that is placed over a coffin. Um, and obviously we get the murder of Danvers Carew. So again, Paul here is massively symbolic, not over only of this dark cloud that is covering heaven. Look again at your symbolic meaning there, heaven versus hell and don't forget Hyde is described as being like Satan and the devil had been long caged so we have this other fight of good and evil in terms of this uh, symbolism of hell and heaven obviously we have a, sin a sinister atmosphere here embattled is an interesting word because a quotation I'm going to show you later is the embattled city obviously the city is in a battle with itself and the mention of heaven suggests the divine yet through Stevenson's word choice there is a struggle as, I've, as I mentioned. And again, we've got the pathetic fallacy. Look at the wind charging around. Um, again, can we link this to Hyde? The weed tramples over the girl at the beginning. In terms of pathetic fallacy then, um, in, in case obviously you forgot what it means, um, there's your quick meaning. London appears to be twofold. It's commingled and good, out of good and evil. And commingled is a single word quotation we can use. We get the black winter morning. Look at the adjective black. The morning is foul in its temperament and it reflects the darker side of man. And obviously this is the main concern of the novella. Black also has connotations of something sinister and something, something deadly. And, and as we know, um, Hyde's crimes rise in severity from the trampling of the girl to the death of Sir Danvers Carew. Another easy, easy one to remember, personification in the reinvasion of darkness. So we've got this internal struggle with the setting. Again, this is a reflection of the central concerns of the novel, this duality of man. And look, a reinvasion, it's as if the darkness, abstract noun darkness, the darkness keeps attacking, it keeps invading. 
and this links to the potion the fact that Jekyll is addicted to taking it um, and inevitably can't stop in the end re-invasion of darkness long quote here I don't expect you to remember it but we've got here it will be dark Look at that simple adjective we can remember, like the back end of evening. And there will be the glow of a rich lurid brown, like the light of some strange conflagration. And here, for a moment, the fog would be quite broken up and a haggard shaft of daylight would glance in between the swirling wreaths. So lurid, vividly shocking to give an, an unpleasantly harsh effect there. We've got conflagration, which an extensive and most destructive fire. We've got wreaths, which we would place, obviously, on uh, on coffins. We've got the mention of the fro the fog here, but look how it's broken up a little bit. Um, so again, the the two sides, the respectable part of London and the dingy part of London. The haggard shaft of daylight, as if daylight, daylight is haggard because it's fighting this battle it can't win again. Uh, I know this is getting repetitive, but it is this good versus evil. And we know in this novella that, that evil does win because Jekyll kills himself in the end. So this idea that daylight is haggard because it's fighting with the darkness represents Jekyll. Um, the weather's oppressive, obviously. We've got this struggle between the darkness and the light. Haggard, as I said, the darkness is winning. Uh, both quotations through the choice of verbs suggest this rapid movement and this struggle. Wreaths, as I said, is, is funeral imagery. So everything has this uh, dismal, sinister, ominous tone. The fog, as I've said there, it, it is a symbol, it's a motive. It's claustrophobic. It adds to the sense of unease, um, the mystery and the secrecy because the fog covers the city. And we're, not, we're never quite sure um, who's committing the crimes or, sorry, or who Hyde is. When we get to Soho, it's described as dismal. Simple adjective there. We get, as I said, the reinvasion of darkness, simple use of personification. And we also get this simile, like a district of some city in a nightmare. Nightmare is interesting. Nightmare is something we fear. Utterson is troubled by a nightmare of a faceless figure running through London committing crimes. So we have this link of from Soho, like a district of some city in a nightmare, to Utterson and the nightmares he has. And also more directly, it does link to Hyde and the fact that he's running around committing these crimes. Another quote, as the cab drew up before the address indicated, the fog lifted a little and showed him a dingy street, a gin palace, a low French eating house, a shop for the retail of penny numbers and two penny salads, many ragged children huddled in doorways, many women of many different nationalities passing out, key in hand, to have a morning glass. So in there... We've got again the fog, which is mystery. We've got alcoholism and addiction, which is obviously this dingy part of Soho and this idea of sins and um, pleasures. And remember, Jekyll says, I had to conceal my pleasures. And obviously it's cheap, isn't it? We can tell that by the way that that was described. And again, it's a comment on class and potentially the issues and problems of the working class. And through the main character, Jekyll Stevenson suggests, as I did say, that we can also come to vice, that we can also come to evil, regardless. Because remember, Jekyll is a respected, uh, reputable man, and he's the one, obviously, that is, is the bad guy, if you like. Uh, another quick quote we can remember, the embattled city. London, obviously, is an extended metaphor for the struggle within Jekyll. This embattled city, the battle between daylight and darkness, good and evil, um, Soho versus the respectable part of London. Jekyll's house has two sides as well because his house is described as having an air of wealth. Yes, we're going to link that to this respectable Dr. Jekyll um, who deals with science. But the laboratory is windowless. Nobody can see in. He doesn't want anyone to know what he's doing. He's He needs to protect his reputation. He needs to hide um, the, the portion and, and what he's doing in the laboratory. And don't forget when, when it's visited, there's a sense of strangeness about the laboratory. So again, look at that. Why is there a sense of strangeness? It's adding to the theme of unease. The laboratory highlights his shame as well because don't forget he dies there rather than to face the world's judgment. So not only is the laboratory windowless, dingy, the dingy part of uh, Soho uh, um, with a sense of strangeness, but it represents shame as well, doesn't it? That Jekyll's trying to hide 
what he's doing. Now, just some quick quotes to finish because this was just a quick video. Um, it's essential to remember quotations for this exam. Um, in terms of the, the theme of mystery, secrecy, setting, the use of pathetic fallacy, we've got the thick fog. Obviously, in that one, you need to comment on the fact that the fog is thick. Um, and that links directly to Jekyll when he says that he wears a thick cloak of Edward Hyde. Metaphor, the fog rolled over the city. It's taking over the city. It's always there. Rolling over suggests that it is winning this battle between darkness and light, good and evil. The black winter morning, the adjective black. As I said, it's the morning is foul. The darker side of man is being identified here. The blackness also is a, a representation of the fact that Danvers crew has died. The reinvasion of darkness, the internal struggle within the setting, within the characters, within um, the entire theme of mankind, this good versus evil, heaven versus hell. The fact that darkness keeps reinvading, it always keeps coming back. You've got that link to Jekyll keep keep taking the potion, keep committing sins, keep um, living out his desires and his pleasures. Jekyll's home is described at the beginning as a sinister block. Look at that adjective, sinister. We link it to evil. We link it, in some instances, to the devil. Don't forget, um, Hyde is described as like Satan. So again, we've got the Satan being directly linked to our characters. When Utterson returns home after visiting Jekyll, he, it says, read a, me uh, sorry, read a menace in the flickering of the firelight on the polished cabinets. Look at menace. As if when Utterson returns home after visiting Jekyll, he's deeply disturbed. It's almost as, as if uh, even the furniture is. The moon is described as lying on her back as though the wind had tilted her. Personification as if the world has turned upside down. As if the moon has given up. Given up this fight. The darkness has won. Hyde describes the sky as having constellations that look down upon me. So it's as if um, the stars and the sky and heaven is frowning and ashamed of his actions. And don't forget, as I said earlier, Jekyll is ashamed of what he does. And the quotation I gave you earlier was a great chocolate coloured pole lowered over heaven. But the wind was continually charging and rooting these embattled vapours. So it's just a quick video on setting because it it is key in this novella. Um, try and remember the quotations and massive good luck in your English literature exam.